So again, I'm, I'm going to do it on a bigger piece just so that you can see it uh, more clearly. So this time we've got cotangent x plus secant x. And on the other side, cosine squared plus sine x. share their strategy. You could have done a little on the left, a little on the right, all on one side. Does anybody, let me just see by a show of hands, has anybody gotten to the bottom, gotten the proof? Oh, do you like trig proofs? It's yeah. working out? Okay. So um, what was your strategy? Someone help us out here. What did we do? Listen to Jeremy. Listen to Jeremy. All right. That's good advice too. Um, Jeremy, what did you tell her? Uh, a lot of stuff. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay, I uh, changed cotan x to cos x over sine x. Okay, so you started on this left side and you went cos x over sine x plus secant x. And then I changed secant x to plus 1 over cos x. Okay, cos x over sine x plus 1 over cos x and? And then I just added them together. Or yeah. like I did the common denominator. Okay, so be careful. When you say that, you got to show it too, right? So make sure you show the steps here. This would be cos x over sine x. I have to multiply top and bottom by cosine. And yeah, sine on top and bottom. Oops, what did I? Oh, one over secant. I was, my brain was working even faster than I could. There we go. Okay. So then now you got common denominators, right? So you went cosine squared x over sine x cos x um, plus sine x over sine x cos x. And that means on the next step, I think you've got it beat, right? Okay. So that'll be cosine squared x plus sine x over sine x cos x. Okay, yeah, that looks good to me. Uh, question? Um, no, it's just something I'd like to point out. Okay. I think I have a valid hypothesis as to why today there are many people who don't understand fractions. What's that? I don't think any of those people are in this room, but yeah, my hypothesis, I've tried to explain it, explain it earlier today, but it didn't work out well. So I'll just say that it's, it's entirely Darwinian. <laughs> and can, can we talk about it later? Because we're actually kind of getting I close know, on I time. So, but the Darwinian thing should more, more or less sum it up. Okay. Um, so uh, there are, of course, more roots than that. We could have done um, a, another proof. As long as your sequence of steps is valid, you would get full marks. Okay? So. Um, again, I mentioned that we're running a little bit late on time, so I'm going to have to kill one of the uh, amazing discoveries of math class. But uh, we would have put these into calculators, and we got that they both equal one. Okay. So here's the, the unit circle popping up again. Um, it's always important when we talk sines and cosines. This is the equation for the unit circle. If you were to try and graph it, that relationship is what the unit circle would be. Now, we don't do conic sections anymore in Math 12, so you have to take my word for it. It used to be that Math 12s would be able to tell me the equation of a circle with radius 1, but that's okay. For now, you have to just believe me because I said so. So um, this equation, x squared plus y squared equals 1, um, we also know this. We know that x is cos and y is sine. So we can combine them up, and we can get cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta equals to 1. And you can see that relationship on the unit circle if you try and calculate the length of the radius, which has a radius of 1. Right? If you use the triangle and the hypotenuse, all that stuff. Okay? From this identity, we can get two more. So the first one is if we divided everybody by cos, so cosine squared theta and cosine squared theta, 
That means it would get 1 plus tangent squared theta um, equals secant squared theta. But Mr. Joyce, I thought you weren't allowed to do things across equal signs. Well, this is true. I'm not telling you to prove it. I'm telling you it's true. So you can move things across the equal sign when you know they're true. I hope so. He always knows whether something is true. Okay. So next, uh, we can get one more if we divide by sine. Yeah, it's sine squared if you couldn't see it. So if I divided everybody by sine, I get another one. I get cotangent squared theta plus 1 equals cosecant squared theta. Okay. So good news for you. They are provided on the formula sheet, those additional uh, identities. But that's where they come from. And we're going to use them just to show you uh, just a couple more uh, proofs that would use these new uh, identities. So I'll tell you that uh, I believe you can do the first two only using these two proofs, or these, these new three identities. You don't need the previous ones we did. Okay, so let's take a look at this first one. Cosine squared plus sine squared plus tangent squared equals secant. Can anybody think of a way of starting off this proof? I mean, you might even want to draw like a, a bar down there. But what do you think? Sorry? Break tangent up? Uh, you could. Um, in this instance, it's going to be the three new ones that we're trying to use. So of the three new identities that I just put up there, can you tell me another one you might want to use? Sure, Lily. Is it 1 plus tan squared theta? Yeah, so right here, this is the first one that we had. It equals to 1. So I could call that 1 plus tangent squared theta. And, oh, look at that. That's the other one right here. So that would be secant squared theta. Okay? So it turns out that we can do that one fairly nicely using the identities. So I'm going to have you try the other two using those two identities. Uh, you may need to use uh, the third one, I believe. You may need to use some of the ones that we started the day with. Okay, so... Um, whoops, too far. Um, I'm going to kind of move us forward a bit just because I know it's getting close there and I know the teenage brain stops at 301 so better get uh, or 259 is it 255 okay I got two minutes I better hurry okay so in this one what you might want to start with I don't quite see an identity right off the, the beginning but what I could do is I could make one subtle change here and make this sine x Sorry, sine squared x over cos squared x. So the reason I did that is now I know that the top and bottom are going to disappear. So I'll end up with 1 minus sine squared x. Wait, what about the 1s? The 1 is still there. I didn't touch the 1. I just uh, changed tangent to sine squared over cos squared. I just made this one change into this one. Okay. So... 1 minus sine squared equals cos x. As tempting as it might be to move that over and say 1 equals sine squared plus cos, you still can't do that. But what you can do is you can look at the identity that I've already given you, this identity that I've told you is true, and you can say if that's true, then cosine squared must be equal to 1 minus sine squared theta. If it's true, you can move it across the equal sign. So that means sine squared, it is cosine squared x. Yes? Would that be legitimate on the thing, or would we have to go back to the proof and say, since this proof equals... Um, anytime you have a question, that means you should include it in your work. Because if you feel like the person marking your work won't understand what you did, you could lose a mark. So if you said to yourself, should I write it down? The answer is always yes. Okay? So good point. Okay, so for the last one here, um, it doesn't look like I have any of those, those identities to begin with because there's no squares. Okay, but what I could do is I could 
change it to look like this, and then I could make a common denominator. So this will be sine x. minus 1 over sine x. And I know I'm getting close to something here because now I'm going to end up with a sine squared, which a lot of those identities have. So this looks kind of like the last one, which is uh, right here. Can anybody figure out what the difference is between those two? Yeah, it's times in by a negative. So um, I could rewrite that as negative, uh, sorry, negative 1 minus sine squared x over the sine of x. And that I can put down as cos squared x negative over the sine of x. And just because we haven't done it yet, let's just say that we quit. We went, oh no, I can't see anywhere else to go. Okay, let's go and take a look at the other side. Cotangent, negative cotangent, I could write that as negative sine x. Sorry, I lied, it's negative cos. Mm -hmm. Negative cos x over sine x times cosine x. That would be negative cos squared x over sine x. And I did it. They're the same on both sides. Thank you, thank you. So left side and right side are the same. That means we, uh, even though we didn't do it all on one side, still again, full points for that. <laughs>